You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. We're currently at 3%, and that's using a cutoff of 1.3% copper. If we increase the cutoff to 1.4% copper, for instance, the deposit increases to uh, 3.15% copper, but there's additional structures that we really haven't explored that are, say, another 200 meters to the east and west of those veins. So I'm pretty sure that uh, over the winter we're going to commence exploration of, of those kind of uh, outlying areas. And with any kind of exploration success, given the, the magnitude of the Corner Bay main vein, uh, we're bound to find the extra 2 million tons we need to get to 10 million tons. So there's a couple of ways of getting there. One of them would be sooner than the other, but I, I think rest assured, we will get to 10 million tons on that deposit. Welcome back. This is Mining Stock Education. I'm your host, Bill Powers. And in today's show, we are going to be profiling and getting an update from Dore Copper Mining. Uh, they're advancing their project, uh, the hub and spoke model of future production, hopefully gold and copper by 2024 is the goal. They would like to reach 60 million copper equivalent pounds per year production or 100,000 gold equivalent ounces. So Ernie, welcome back onto the program. And at that first deposit that you're looking to bring back into production, you just announced a mineral resource up, uh, estimate. So please walk us through this and talk about the significance. Thanks, Bill, and pleasure to be on the show again. We announced the updated mineral resource for the Corner Bay deposit. This is located 55 kilometers from our mill. And this is the deposit that we have been drilling uh, since we obtained the properties in 2017. In 2019, we did a resource estimate doubling the size of the deposit to 3 million tons. And with the most recent announcement, we have now more than doubled the size of the deposit to 7.2 million tons, maintaining the grade at 3% copper and a gold byproduct of 0.27 grams per ton gold. So the deposit, uh, the increase is a result of about 40, 45 drill holes that we've put into the deposit since uh, the end of 2019 or early 2020. We've had lots of success, many very good intercepts between uh, two and uh, nine meters thickness with grades between two and a quarter and 9% copper. And those, depo those intercepts result in a very continuous deposit which is really interesting because when we get to mining the deposit, uh, we should be able to do so very efficiently. So Ernie, could you talk about the confidence level you have in this deposit at this point in the development? So we're quite confident with the deposit as it stands. Currently, we have approximately 30 to 40% of the resources in indicated and the rest in inferred. However, the drilling in the inferred region was extremely continuous. Uh, we used about 100 meter intervals or spacing between the holes and, and the consistency was, was really good. We could, within a few meters, predict when we're going to hit the structure and it was always there. And so uh, one of the things we're going to do next year is we're going to drill, uh, do some infill drilling and be able to get almost the entire deposit to the indicated uh, classification. But even more important is the fact that we continue to do exploration drilling on the deposit. Uh, the 7.2 million ton resource, the cutoff for that, uh, for that resource was in early June, and we've continued to drill since then. And we've had a number of uh, decent intercepts in areas that are outside of the current resource. So we're very confident that we're going to continue to increase the size of the deposit. So now you have this deposit grading at 3% copper. I mean, what class does that put you in? And also, what was the historic grade of the resource when this deposit was in production? So the deposit uh, typically always had this uh, grade between 3 and 3.5%. Three and uh, we're currently at 3%, and that's using a cutoff of 1.3% copper. If we increase the cutoff to 1.4% copper, for instance, the deposit increases to... 3.15% uh, copper and the gray and the tons go down from 7.2 to say 6.45 million. So we, we really have a substantial deposit to work with here. 
So you're working on the exploration, as, as you mentioned, but you're also at the same time progressing the economic side of this deposit, right? That's correct. And we've commenced the PA with a firm called BBA based out of Montreal, Quebec. Uh, they have a lot of experience with, uh, with underground mines, mines in Quebec, uh, refitting plants, which is, the, which is going to be uh, the situation with us, with our Copper Rand Mill. So they're a great firm for us to work with. Uh, I was at site last week uh, with a team uh, of BBA engineers, and, and we're looking at all the different deposits in the mine sites in the mill and strategizing in terms of what's the best way to get things started. And definitely uh, Corner Bay will be our anchor deposit in our PEA. We'll be uh, commencing mining there uh, as one of the first mines. And, and it looks like with the tonnage that eventually we're going to get to, it should have at least uh, 12 to 15 year mine life. And then as part of the hub and spoke, we're going to complement the Corner Bay deposit with other deposits. And one of the deposits, which we haven't talked a lot about, but is a very good complement to Corner Bay, is the Devlin deposit. This is a 2% copper deposit, which is about uh, 10 kilometers away from Corner Bay. It's very shallow, and there's lots of synergies between operating those deposits at the same time. And uh, we're actually going to be announcing uh, the mineral resource at Devlin quite shortly. So we're starting with Corner Bay and then bringing Devlin online. And the time frame is it still about 2024 to commence production? Is that what you're looking at? Correct. That's what we're looking at. Uh, we were going through the Quebec environmental impact statement process. Uh, the process is, is a very transparent process, but it does take some time as the folks in Quebec uh, want a thorough evaluation of the impacts of your mining operation. We're ready to assign the, uh, the studies for the elaboration of the environmental impact statements, uh, ready to start meeting the communities in a very uh, thoughtful way, in a very thorough way. And, uh, and then we're off to the races uh, in terms of getting the project through its environmental permitting uh, process. And so after we finish the PA, we'll embark upon the feasibility study uh, one of the main parts of the feasibility study will be, will be that infill drilling at the Corner Bay deposit, but also part of the feasibility study will be uh, continued exploration at, uh, say, some of our other properties like the Joe Mann property, which needs more, probably needs more resources uh, under the ground in order to include it in the feasibility study. With the PEA, now it hasn't been an issue for you to, to raise money thus far, but with the PEA, does that open up more opportunities for funding? Uh, how, how does that work into the game plan? Correct. So the, the PEA really is uh, setting your, your mark, showing the type of project that you do have. And we do expect that uh, the PEA will trigger some investors to, uh, find, to invest in, in the company. Uh, we do know there's a couple of funds actually that require a PA at a minimum in order for them to invest in the company. Also, the PA triggers the discussions with different financing groups regarding the eventual debt financing of the project build. Uh, we're anticipating a modest project build of about $120 million Canadian in order to get two mines in the mill and the tailings facility into operation. And uh, having a PEA allows us to commence those discussions with the folks who provide debt financing. So really opens the door uh, on a number of fronts for us. And with the Corner Bay deposit, this would be trucked, uh, you said 55 kilometers to the Copper Rand Mill, is that correct? Correct. The current distance is 55 kilometers. We're evaluating using some existing forest roads. And I think we just need to connect two of the forest road systems and we can cut the distance by 10 kilometers, uh, bringing the distance to 45 kilometers. So it's, uh, you know, that's about uh, it's about an hour of an hour's drive uh, with a truck. So very convenient. And uh, we can have the ore in the mill uh, pretty soon after it leaving the ground. So Ernie, you've been at site recently, and I know you can't share everything until it's uh, officially released, but are, is there anything you can share about your observations uh, thus far based on your recent uh, experience at site? Yeah, there's a couple of things, Bill. Uh, first of all, it's uh, the Corner Bay deposit. We continue to pull out really nice core from the ground. Uh, and in some ways it gets a little boring where a lot of these intercepts look very similar, where they're 
nice high grade three to five, three to five or six percent copper intervals that are a few meters thick with semi massive uh, capital pyrite present, uh, which just leads to continued. Uh, we know that's going to lead to relatively simple mining and uh, in milling. Uh, second thing is we've been building up our team and, and I see the team elements coming together and uh, we continue to build the team as we're going to be transitioning from almost exclusively exploration to a mix of exploration and development. And uh, we're putting the team members in place to do that. And I see the team starting to gel. So you are trying to bring this into production. You are not just uh, trying to prep this for somebody to buy you out. But if you guys are headed towards production, unless something else happens, right? That's correct. Yeah, the, this uh, Shibugumu is a historical mining camp, a mining town, and uh, the people we're hiring are, are people who are working in, you know, they've worked at mines throughout Quebec and the world. Uh, and we're putting together that team to uh, help build and then obviously operate these um, these mines and we'll reestablish Shibugumu as a copper mining uh, district in Quebec. Ernie, before you go, uh, for those that do like exploration, even though you're transitioning into development, so we're at 7 million tons at about 3% copper. Can you give us your hopes or expectation of how many tons you think you can grow uh, this deposit to? So as you mentioned, we're currently at 7.2 million tons. Uh, with the drilling that we've been doing over the last few months, uh, the site line date million tons is very evident. And, and then to get to 10 million tons, we have a couple of options. One, obviously, is we just go a little deeper and eventually we'll get there. So it's almost guaranteed that we're going to get to 10 million tons. Uh, the other way we can get to 10 million tons is via the exploration of parallel veins to the main corner bay vein, where of that 7.2 million tons, the majority of that is in one, the main vein structure. Uh, we, in the current resource, we've identified an east vein and some west veins that are about 250 meters east and west of the, uh, of the main structure. But there's additional structures that we really haven't explored that are, say, another 200 meters to the east and west of those veins. So I'm pretty sure that uh, over the winter, we're going to commence exploration of, of those kind of uh, outlying areas. And with any kind of exploration success, given the, the magnitude of the Corner Bay main vein, uh, we're bound to find the extra 2 million tons we need to get to 10 million tons. So there's a couple of ways of getting there. One of them would be sooner than the other, but I, I think rest assured, we will get to 10 million tons on that deposit. The company, again, is Dore Copper Mining, trades in Toronto as DCMC on the OTCQB as DRCMF, and also in Frankfurt as DCM. Ernie, thanks for coming on the show and providing this update. Very welcome, Bill, and, uh, and a good day to, uh, and a good fall season to all of your viewers.